Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Seek and Destroy. And today we are finally going to break down the second half of the Batman Junior novel, which came out about a month ago now, I think it was. And, uh, and I've read it twice, actually, because I wanted to refresh myself. Uh, but I also have some notes here. And so we're going to focus on the second half of the book, part two of the book, uh, because obviously they split it into two sections. And then the second half, they actually have these cool pieces of uh, artwork that are on there, including this one right here, which is on my shirt. I actually bought this shirt and this hat at Walmart. They were like 11 bucks a piece. And I figured, what the heck, man, I'm getting swept up in this whole Batmania. Kind of like back when the uh, the first movie came out with Michael Keaton uh, back in the 80s. There was like Converse shoes, t-shirts, like they put Batman on everything. You know, Warner Brothers realized we have an icon here and we're going to put his, you know, his symbol on everything and it's going to sell like crazy. And it did. And that's what made that movie a massive success, not just, you know, financially from the movie, but also the merchandising. And so once again, I've been kind of getting swept up in this, you know, uh, Ace and I, Ace the Bat Hound, my new dog that I've uh, rescued we've been watching batman animated movies together we've been watching the the batman animated series as well on um, on the uh, hbo max app and stuff um then also i got a like a lego set here a little batmobile lego set you can hear ace chewing in the background by the way i gave him a bat treat and he's chewing on it right now um and then we also got some of the mcfarland figures like penguin you know so i've been and then i got the like the little four inch figures too that i uh, you know filmed some footage of and we even got that pizza that from like little caesars i think it was there was like a Batman pizza they did with calzone, you know, uh, pizza type thing shaped like a bat. So uh, I've kind of been getting swept up in this. And I'll be, you know, to be honest, I don't know if I'll love the movie. I, I'm not a big Matt Reeves fan. Um, I like kind of the Planet of the Apes stuff, some of the, what he did, um, at least the second movie. Um, but then War of Planet of the Apes, I kind of was just like, eh, it was fine. I mean, it's a fine movie. But I am not a Cloverfield fan. And uh, I think he did one like Let Us In or Let Me In or what, Let the Right One In. Or he did one of those remakes. And uh, and I, I it's so forgettable for me. Like it was, a, I think it was when I saw it at the time, I was like, yeah, it's a pretty decent remake. But I, I didn't get like, I wasn't blown away by it. And same with Cloverfield. I'm not a Cloverfield fan. So for me, I'm not a huge Matt Reeves guy. Um, but uh, also I don't like realistic takes of characters like Batman. Uh, I'm not a big fan of that because I think it limits you creatively of what villains you could bring in later, like Clayface or Man Bat or Killer Croc. Like when people look at things through a, a like a, a realistic lens, uh, when they're dealing with superheroes and stuff, I kind of don't like that. I mean, sure, it needs to be grounded in some way, but there needs to be something fantastical about it too. And I feel like people who lean away from that uh, just aren't making the type of movies that I really want to watch. So I'm curious though, you know, this movie's coming out, or actually it is out now as of today, it's March 1st. So uh, it'll be out, you know, people will be watching it in IMAX later on. And then in Regal Cinemas on March 2nd, which is tomorrow. Um, and then uh, and then obviously by Friday, most people will be out there probably watching a movie. So what we're gonna talk about today is this junior novel, the second half of it. And so we might contain some spoilers for the movie. I don't know. I, I've been staying away from leaks and everything from the movie. So I don't know any of that stuff or what's really going to be involved. I have my theories based on what I saw in the trailers. But for the most part, um, you know, I don't really know what's going to happen. So I do know what happens in this book, though. And we're going to share that information with you. I have my list here and everything. And we're going to go over that and just talk about a few of the beats that are from this book. So if you want to go into this new Batman movie blind, I would say come back after you watch the movie and check out this episode. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Um, the second part of this book kind of starts off a, a couple years after part one did. And so Bruce is finishing college at this point. He's gone on to nearly a dozen colleges all over the world, uh, dropping out and transferring and picking up new uh, majors and, and stuff like that. So he's learning all these different subjects, which will eventually lead him into the stuff he'll apply to being Batman. You know, he's learning about science, forensics, he's learning martial arts. He's just learning from all the best teachers that his money can buy him. And so I thought that was pretty cool that the book kind of touches on that stuff. Um, but now he's back in Gotham with a basic level of knowledge on a bunch of topics like forensics, uh, like chemistry, like athletics and things like that. He's got kind of like a baseline for all of that and a foundation that he can now build off of. And now he realizes, okay, now I'm gonna start needing connections and people to work with because I can't really do all this by myself. And so he's, he's like, but I can do a lot of it by myself, but the, the goal is to, you know, not, so we can, you know, cast a wider net and really save this city. So, um, so it's kind of neat, you know, just seeing this young man kind of growing into Batman. Obviously it's a story us comic fans have seen numerous times and told many different ways, but this is kind of neat because being a novel form, you can kind of explore the psyche 
a little bit more or at least in different ways than you sometimes can in comic books. So I kind of like that. And I also like Alfred's role in this. He's kind of bugging Bruce uh, to get more involved with Wayne Industries at this point in the book. But Batman or Bruce is not really into that. He's like, eh, I don't think so. But something does catch his eye, you know, kind of like in the Nolan movies with the applied science and stuff. Like he's kind of like, all right, there is a division that I have some interest in. I'd like to know where some of our money's going to and what kind of, uh, you know, I guess projects my company is uh, developing in some way, because maybe I can apply that to being Batman. Um, so he does talk to a researcher, but they don't say if it's Lucius Fox or anything. So, uh, so yeah, so he's, again, taking the steps, right, towards being Batman, because he's not Batman yet. Um, and then meanwhile, Edward uh, Nashton, um, who is now graduated high school, went on to college, but he's going to like a local community college and he's barely passing any of his classes. Like Bruce is transferring all around the globe, going to all these big schools and he's acing every class he's in. He's like bored in each class, nothing's challenging him. And Edward is the opposite. Uh, he's bored, but he's he's allowing it to get to him. You know, he's uh, he's failing classes, he's not doing well. He just knows that he likes puzzles and that he's starting to really have a disdain for people on, on some level, uh, uh, but also like, people he deems are not worthy or good people. So he's kind of starting to uh, evolve into this kind of, all right, there's a line here and I think I'm speaking for the people on this side of the line and my actions are gonna, you know, um, try to help those people. Whereas, uh, you know, the world and society and rules and all that stuff seems to want to keep people down. So so that's kind of what his thing, you know, money uh, corrupts people, it makes them evil. And, and he's kind of like, yeah, I, I don't like that. I don't like people who are, moving up and getting protected for doing bad things just because they're rich. And I think that's going to play out obviously in the movie where he's going after like politicians and, and people like that, one percenters of Gotham. So, um, so Edward in this, he manages to get a job though as a forensic accountant. And so he's starting at the, at the base level of forensics and starting to see kind of uh, have a peek into how that world works too. So it's pretty neat that I didn't expect this from the book where they're paralleling the roads that you know, Edward and Bruce go on. They both come from, uh, you know, painful origins in a way. Edward doesn't have a family and Bruce lost his family, but Bruce has all this money and Alfred to kind of support him and, and get him through life. Whereas Edward has none of that stuff. Um, and in fact, he's, he's so such an oddball, you know, to most people that people have kind of given up on Edward. And so, uh, so that's kind of, again, building his disdain for the world in some way. So I kind of like that they explore that. And they don't go too deep into it because it's a young adult novel. So I was appreciating it that it, it peppered in some of that stuff, which I really liked. Um, and whereas Bruce has a car that he's fixing up, like the Batmobile, Edward has a car that is beat up and he doesn't really care to learn about mechanics to, to get it to work. So it's just all those kind of things are, are really great. And, um, and along the way, Bruce is now donning some kind of costume not really the bat costume yet but he's stopping muggers he's you know helped this lady who had her purse stolen um but then she uh, at one point i think he even in broad daylight uh stops someone from stealing a woman's purse and sh she recognized him she's like oh my god bruce wayne just stopped me from you know my purse getting stolen and then he realized oh crap like that's not good i can't i can't be seen and recognized uh, for doing this so that's when he starts developing like okay i'll wear a mask i'll wear something to protect myself uh, when I go out at night to stop bad guys. Um, so th again, just showing that groundwork or that that um, that foundation of where Bruce decides to build the mantle and legacy of Batman off of, and why he does it. And that's one thing we always talk about, like in in business and stuff. Like you know, when you're at work, explaining the why to people. Like if you can't do something or, or you can't accommodate in some way, try to explain the why so they understand. And that's kind of what this book feels like. It feels like someone applying like a retail uh, uh you know um, dialogue and stuff like you know or concepts in a way to how bruce handles things he, he does trial and error and he, and he messes up and he's like okay i don't like this so let's uh, you know apply a solution and i kind of like all that stuff i just thought it was it was really neat and, and bruce talks about bruce jitsu which is the martial arts he's kind of creating by learning muay thai and and, uh, and kickboxing and all these different styles and then alfred uh, teaching him like military tactics from when he was in the military 
uh, all combined kind of make this inside joke where they call it Bruce Jitsu. So he's still working on that and developing that. Uh, but then he also does, um, he, he's bailing on a lot of Wayne industry meetings in the book at this point, but he is still interested in that one division. So he, so he looks into it, but then he finds out, like he sets off too many red flags. Like people are like, why is Bruce Wayne looking into this? What's what's going on in that department? Are we are we embezzling money? What's like, and then he's like, okay, it's fine. And so he has to back away because he's like, all right, I'm, I'm, I alerted too many people and uh, just by, you know, just by looking into this. Um, so he, again, just showing him he has to play things really smart because Bruce Wayne is like so well known in Gotham and in the world that he just can't get away with doing any of this stuff. So it's it's him creating like the the distance, like, okay, I gotta, I gotta be back here then. I, I'm, until I figure out a way to interact with people better and, and, and lie better, I better just stay back and just develop the Batman persona back here. So, so all that's uh, building up. And then you have the Moroni and uh, Falcone, you know, life, uh, those characters and the crime world building up um, and the Oswald Cobblepot. Uh, there's even a point where a guy is um, working for Oswald and Falcone, I believe. And then uh, Oswald, I think gets the guy into backstabbing Mar uh, uh, Falcone in a way, but then Falcone realizes it's not really that guy in his fault, he was goaded by, uh, you know, by Oswald E. Cobblepot. So I kind of, I kind of like that dynamic because there's like this new like explosive that's hit the streets. And at first you think it's Edward and he's developing new things. Turns out it's not, it's kind of a misdirection. Uh, there's this new uh, weapon that is hitting the streets of Gotham that uh, could cause a lot of damage. It's like an acid, um, and the, but you could use it as an explosive and all these things, there's other applications you can use it for. And, uh, and, and it's, it turns out it's actually government created. And so and now with that has leaked onto the streets of Gotham and it's causing robbers to be able to melt through locks on, on doors or safes or whatever, and they can rob places easier. And like I said, you can make explosives out of it and threaten to blow up buildings and so it's 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 escalating like the the crime in gotham is escalating as bruce is trying to figure out how to deal with the the gotham crime that he already knows exists but as he's getting involved things are starting to escalate new new threats are entering the streets of gotham and stuff and so bruce is trying to track down who's behind you know this new acid this new weapon that can be you know uh used for horrible things and could destroy gotham and, and other places around the world so he's trying to get to the bottom of that. And while he does, he ends up coming across his old friend, Dex. Uh, so I thought that was kind of cool because I thought she was going to be kind of lost in the shuffle. But uh, when he stops, uh, you know, the person who's delivering the, the acid to the street guys who are using it, um, the delivery person is a getaway driver and they actually out you know, maneuver uh, Bruce and his new Batmobile a couple times. And he's like, no, this can't, this can't happen. Who is this driver? And it turns out it's his old friend Dex who taught him a lot about driving. So, uh, so that was cool to get that reunion, but also to really set, you know, solidify that line that Bruce is on this side of the law and he still wants to kind of play in the rules. Whereas um, Dex was just, you know, her father was framed by Oswald Cobblepot and this other uh, thug that works for Falcone. And so, you know, Bruce sees that she's between a rock and a hard spot. So he figures out a way to help her while also stopping this, you know, chemical for being used on anything else in Gotham. And then while all that's going on, obviously Edward is still building up to, you know, possibly doing some horrific things of his own and learning more about the city and learning more about the politicians and the corruption and all that. So that's kind of where most of this second half is, is, uh, is, is that it's like the, the final stages of Bruce becoming Batman and Edward realizing that, okay, he also, even though he's a nobody, he's gotten away with a lot of the stuff he's done so far and he's getting more braver. You know, he's getting braver on uh, attempting other horrific things, but he really wants to direct it. Just like Bruce, Bruce is trying to figure out how to direct his anger for the loss of his parents at things. Edward is trying to figure out a way to direct his anger at the world towards something. And that's ultimately what this book in the second half is brings you is is that focus is these two characters hitting that point where they're they finally get to their focus you know the the the, the characters are going to probably be at the start of the movie when when the movie starts um, but there's other characters in this there's Commissioner Savage um, there's Janice Dore uh, these are characters that Batman um, Bruce kind of avoids the commissioner um, we don't get Gordon at all in this actually uh, but Janice is kind of the person he works with. Uh, Alfred mentions her name. And so he says, all right, I'm going to send her some anonymous tips. And that, and he uses her 
to really take down the, the, the chemical and acid and goo and stuff that's hitting the streets of Gotham. And she's able to expose this conspiracy that it's it's actually from a nearby military base and it, sh it shouldn't be in you know public hands at all. And it's like a, something that's being tested and, and now it's being sold from someone on the military base to people on the streets through the gangs of Gotham like Falcone and stuff and Oswald Cobblepot. So she's starting to blow the lid off of that and, and finding ways to take down these mobsters. So it has begun. Like change in Gotham begins at the end of this book. And, uh, and so it's kind of pumped me up a little bit more to see the world uh, of that, that you know, Matt Reeves has. Because one thing I've seen in some of the early reviews is people saying that Gotham is like really well fleshed out in this new movie. And that, I think that's why this book it has like a good foundation for that. It builds off of that in this book. Because this world, you know, that David Lumen, who's the writer of this book, uh, you know, that he's kind of created but also probably created based off of you know a strong foundation from matt reeves's script uh i'm gonna guess you know david probably had access to something along those lines or at least a good outline or some storyboards or something clearly you know I, what i hope is that the the kind of the world that's in here is what's in the movie because i've like i said i've seen and read that people are complimenting that part of the new movie uh, that the city itself is like you really get a sense of it and uh, and i feel like you get a little bit of that here in the book as well as the people who inhabit it. And I think that's what's one of the strengths of this book is that it's uh, it's character driven, but it's also world building and world driven. And I, and for something that's so small and so, um, you know, uh, short, actually, you know, it's like 140 pages or something. Um, that's pretty great. It's a good accomplishment. And it actually inspired me to make a few changes to my novels, uh, The King of Neverland, uh, based on after reading this, I took a couple notes of uh, kind of styles and techniques that this writer used to kind of get a point across or to summarize something and I really like that I'm like yeah, I could use a little bit a little bit of that in Neverland so the fact that I learned something uh, from this as a writing as a writer um, but then also like got interested in it beyond just um, the kind of the story but just also the characters and the world that's it gives me a little bit more hope for the movie because obviously this wouldn't exist without the new movie so I'm, I'm hoping that uh, you know what David Lumen put in this book is just what he extrapolated from, you know, Matt Reeves's film. So uh, I'm excited. You know, the movie's coming out, or like I said, the movie's out now. Uh, technically, or it will be out later today. Um, but, but other people have seen it. Critics have seen it. It's got like a 90% or something on Rotten Tomatoes, which I'm not. I don't really care too much about that. I, I just want to see it for myself and judge it for myself. And I will be honest. I'm. A little put off by the three hour runtime. I, I don't feel like that's absolutely necessary. But then again, I, I'll see the movie and we'll see if I still feel that way after I see the movie. Uh, but for me, I mean, you know, I, I like Batman a little more fantastical, a little bit more accessible to all ages, if, if possible. Um, and, uh, and so I just have a very different perspective of Batman um, and also emotionally I, there's like only one or two versions of Batman I've ever really loved uh, so I'm a I'm a Batman fan but I'm a very specific Batman fan uh, so if you are the same you know I'd love to hear some of your favorite versions of Batman because I don't want to get into spoilers or discussing any of the movie stuff right now um, if you have thoughts on this book if you've read it let me know some of your thoughts if I missed anything because I had a bunch of notes here but I just skipped over some of them because I just didn't want this to be a four-hour video um, so you know let me know your thoughts on this book down below and then just also some of your favorite versions of Batman like what do you look for in a Batman story uh, without you know spoiling the new movie um, you know let me know unless this is like uh, middle of March and you're watching this anytime after middle of March of 2022 and you want to comment down below, I think it's safe to do spoilers after like the second week the movie's out. Uh, so if you're watching this later, feel free to add spoilers. Um, but uh, but for those of you who are watching it like the first week this video is uploaded, um, just tell me spoiler free from the movie if you liked it or not, um, or if you just have a favorite version of Batman and or something you hope the movie does, you know, let me know down below. Uh, but that's it for me today. Thanks so much for watching the show as always. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And if you're wondering where I got this hat and this shirt, I picked them up at Walmart. I think I might have said that earlier. Um, but uh, yeah, they were only like 11 bucks each. So I was like, again, just getting swept up in the whole Batmania. I saw these. I put them on my credit card. I'm like, screw it, man. You only live once. And when I saw the first Michael Keaton Batman movie, I went in with a Batman hat and a, a Batman shirt on uh, with my little brother who had a matching hat and shirt. And I think we had the Batman Converse shoes. So since I can't get any Batman shoes this time, I at least have the hat and shirt. And I'll definitely wear these when I go see the movie whenever I get a chance to go see it. Because I don't know if I'll go see it 
right away or if I'll see it in a couple weeks. I, I don't know. Work is really crazy right now. So I'll do the best I can. But as soon as I see it, I promise you guys a review um, after I see the film. So thanks so much for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Peace.